yeah. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah. Please tell me all the bad news. All right, news, everybody, here we go. Out. It is that FN Sports Show. We are here with the Adam Holes at Adam Holes Sports, NFL writer for Sports Kita. We're going to wrap up the NFC South. We've gone through all the teams as we're going to do for every team in the NFL before the season starts. We're talking record predictions. We're talking about how it's going to come out. If you've been paying attention to the shows, you know that we're both pretty high on New Orleans. I'm pretty high on Carolina. Adam likes Tampa. We're going to talk about all of it. Mistakes were made. Corrections are to be had. Discussions are about to go down. But first, we got to welcome Adam. Adam, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. It was a long and winding road, but I I think we're on the same page now. Yeah, we're going to head into the AFC South on the next episode. But to wrap up this NFC South, there's a few things observations and whatnot that we want to get to right off the bat we'll start in Carolina like we did for the series you've got Carolina going 0 and 6 you've got 5 and 12 overall for Carolina going 0 and 6 to start off the schedule I've got them at 10 and 7 and there, there's just as much disparity for Tampa we, we have Atlanta in the sewer we've got New Orleans at the top and we've got Carolina and Tampa somewhere in the middle I've got them high you've got them low which I think just shows the uncertainty certainty with the Carolina situation and the Tampa situation for this year. Let's start with Carolina. I mean, you know, I do have them at only five wins, like you said, losing their first six. A lot of that's because of how many changes, especially on offense, when you look at Carolina, it's basically an entire new offense. No more DJ Moore. They changed their running back. They got the rookie quarterback. They got Frank Reichen as head coach, new receivers. Everything's new and different there, and usually in that kind of situation, it takes a little while for things to come together, especially when it's a rookie quarterback and not a veteran quarterback. So the slow start uh, for me is mostly due to that. And I have admitted that 10 and 7 is probably a bit high. To me, that was the biggest shocker of the whole NFC South series between me and you (laughs) is you giving Carolina that many wins. You know, like like if there was anything that was a hot take between anything, you know, we said from the NFC South, it's you giving the Panthers double double-digit wins. I like it because, as we always say with the NFL, things never go exactly how you think they're going to go. There's always surprises, teams that are going to be better than they should be and teams that are going to be worse than they should be. So maybe Carolina is one of those teams. Oh, if you think that was crazy, uh, buckle up, my friend. We've still got 28 teams to go. I'm quite sure I can shock you (laughs) greater than that. To be honest, I mean, it was a shock to myself to kind of go through this. But we talked about how the schedules are kind of set up to make teams look better or look worse than they are. New Orleans being one of those examples, we both have New Orleans at the top of the division, and we really did kind of cite the schedule strength-wise or lack thereof as a reason for that. And that's going to happen throughout this whole process, I think. Without going through the schedule, if you were to just say, you know, how many wins are the Bucs going to have and the Saints going to have, I probably wouldn't have the Bucs win winning eight games and probably wouldn't have the Saints winning 10 games. But then you go schedule game by game. They both have relatively easier schedules and there's a lot of winnable games there that it's just the way it plays out. To me, the Bucks are not an eight-win team just looking at them as a whole. But when you go schedule, they can win eight games. You look at the NFC South, they not only play each other, but they also play all the teams in the NFC North. And then they have like three outliers eat. Atlanta's going to play Arizona. Arizona in the Jets. New Orleans is going to play the Giants uh, in the Rams. And this happens throughout the entire schedule. This year, everybody in the South is also going to play Green Bay and Minnesota and Detroit. It's going to become more profound as we get into things. We talk about the AFC South being the next series. It's definitely going to pop up there. How all the teams in the division are going to play essentially 12 of the same games or 11 if you take their own out. That's kind of how the NFL scheduling works nowadays. It's that rotational It takes, you know, the schedule makers kind of out of it to the sense like they don't get to pick who plays who. There's a specific formula that determines who each team plays. Every year, whatever team you're a fan of, as soon as the previous season ends, you know exactly what teams you're playing the next season. You just don't know the order you're playing them, the details of the schedule. But each division plays an entire NFC division. 
an entire AFC division, two times each against the teams in your own division, and then in your own conference, you play against the team that correspondingly finished in the same ranking of their division for the other two divisions that you're not playing the whole one of. So I know that sounds kind of complicated, but like it's actually kind of a simple formula. It's actually very simple. You know, there's a lot of hype build up before the schedule comes out, but if you really start digging into articles and people putting things out, those articles are out there. Here's everybody we're playing. We just don't know which order, just like you said. And so it, it, it is interesting, but it's more fun to be surprised. So I try not to get too far into those. You can't accuse like the NFL schedule makers of like being biased or giving one team a harder schedule and one team an easier schedule because they don't determine what teams you play. Where you finish in the rankings the year before directly picks the teams that you play the following season. So the schedule makers are pretty much just picking, you know, which games are prime time and, you know, the location and the international games and stuff like that. You know, it just so happens and where people get all, you know, hyped up and have fun with it is Baker Mayfield goes to Carolina and then Carolina plays Cleveland like in week one or week two of last year. We see it again this year. We're going to have Bryce Young versus Stroud, then immediately turn around and play Richardson and Indy, get those matchups that happen in these things. And and it's a lot of media that can put a spin on it as well. But the schedules really do work out to get a lot of those matchups, those key games that you're kind of looking for for after free agency. They kind of, you know, got lucky last year with a couple things, like even like, you know, with Russell Wilson on the Broncos playing against the Seahawks. They didn't decide that those two teams were going to play. That's just how the schedule formula worked out. What they decided is that that was going to be a primetime game in week one, you know? Like, that probably would not have been an important game. It would have been thrown at like a 430 somewhere, anywhere in the season, but because it was a Russell Wilson return game, they didn't pick the match they pick the date and time. So let's get back to finishing up the NFC South. Atlanta in the bottom, no problem there. You, I am at five and twelve. You have them at six and eleven. I actually have Tampa finishing lower. I have Tampa as last place. You had them at seven and ten. But let's talk about this because in week seventeen, and if you go back and listen to both the Tampa episode and the New Orleans episode, there's a little confusion with how it's presented, how it was worded. You would like to make a change. You would like to. Bump Bump Tampa up to eight and nine, downgrade New Orleans to ten and seven. You know, like, I don't know if I necessarily call it making a change because it was just it was almost like I double spoke. We miscommunicated a little bit on that matchup. I said that I agreed with you that the Saints were gonna win in week seventeen, but directly followed up that statement by saying these two teams are gonna have a home home split. And then again during the Saints episode, I talked about how the Saints and Bucks are gonna have a home home split. I accidentally had the Saints on a sweep in one statement while having it as a home-home split in several other statements. So it's that home-home split that I want to stick with, not the misspeak where I said Saints are going to win in Week 17. It's uh, They're each going to win their home game. And I don't have an issue with this because it was confusing. If you go back and listen, like the way I worded it, you say you kind of double spoke. Adam Holtz always stay in class. You taking a little bit of responsibility. I'll take the hit on it as well. We're going to make that change. It doesn't really change the standings. We've still got New Orleans as number one so after I- that. New Orleans winning the division and it's still highly unlikely that the eight and nine Buccaneers are going to get a wild card spot. So it's kind of just a clerical one game. What's the final record, but it's probably going to have zero impact on the playoff picture. Correct. The only thing that really looks to have impact is the fact that I've got Carolina going 10 and seven. And if they could pull that off, they could be playing for a oh, wild card sure spot. At 10 and seven. Yeah. You've got them dead last. There you go. It, it, we're going to see how it all plays out as the se- season goes on. And that's, what's going to be the fun part of this. I don't know if other conferences are going to be as hard. I don't know if they're going to come out as controversial. I think the big takeaway here, New Orleans at the top, everybody else behind them without really another playoff team in there. Again, even at 10 and 7 in today's NFL, that's not always good enough for a wild card spot. And I admit that I'm definitely reaching there. I think we can agree that in the NFC South, to put the cap on it, this is not a great division. New Orleans came out with a nice schedule. The fact that one of these teams has to make the playoffs, they should be thankful for that. That's why we have divisions in the NFL, right? Uh, That the division winner is going to make the playoffs regardless of how good or bad that division is. And then, you know, the wild cards or if there's other better teams in those divisions, this is probably a division where just the winner is going to get in and 
the rest aren't. I think we're probably both kind of on the same page with that, except with you having the Panthers possibly winning 10 games. They could be in that wild card mix. I think we both agree that this is one of the weakest divisions in the NFL. The one other point that I want to make, you know, like even like outside of this, you know, NFC South, you know, even going back to like, you know, the slight error we made and some of the confusion that goes along, I think it's important to also note that we are making these picks live. You know, like we're not pre-planning out and pre-scheduling how all of this is going to play out. We're going game by game, making the picks live as we see them. But that's what's making this so interesting. I almost can't predict what I think these teams' records are going to be because the Bucks and Saints being an example of that. They're not 8-10 and 10 win teams to me, but when we did their schedule, I guess they could be. When you get to the end, you look at the schedule. Obviously, I was as shocked as everyone else should be by my Carolina oh, yeah. record. Even with the New Orleans record, it's like, wow, not sure that we had it that cut and dry, but there it is. All done for you, as Adam says, live. New Orleans at the top, Atlanta at the bottom, the other two somewhere in the middle, and that's how we got the South playing out. I think we can wrap that one up for now, put a bow on it, right? Let's get to the AFC South. Let's do it. Let's do it. You guys make sure you tune in, catch the new episodes, AFC South. If you did miss the other ones, we'll post those up. They will be there. We'll go back and look at them as the season goes on. Thanks for joining us for another episode as we wrap up the NFC South on our way across the entire NFL. How's your team going to finish? We'll let you know. Catch us again on the next one at that effing sport show at that effing show on Twitter. Go find Adam Hulse at Adam Hulse Sports or over on Sports Kita. We'll catch you guys on the next episode. Have a great one. If you're raining now, I keep making sound. Go another round. Time like bound. Can't stop me now. You don't want to fuck with me. A slow burn like a deceit